I'm Jen here. Welcome. Today I'm going to be going over what is enrichment and what why should you need to know about it. Um, you might have heard of it before through just owning animals or seeing it advertised on a toy maybe. Something like that. Or maybe you haven't heard of it. Uh, that's okay. So let's first of all, I have my notes here. Um, we're going to go over what the definition of enrichment is. It's the action of improving or enhancing the quality of value or something, of something. How does this relate to animals? Well, for animals, it's about improving their quality of life. You know, that's what you want for your animal. You want the best life that you can give them. And so how do we incorporate enrichment into their lives? Or how is enrichment incorporated into their lives? What improves their quality of life? Well, it's really all over the board. Uh, it's such a broad spectrum that it can be intimidating to look at, I, I suppose. So let's start with dogs first. What are some things that could be uh, counted as enrichment for them? It's a huge, huge spectrum because every species of animal is different and then every individual inside that species is different. So dogs, it could be going for a walk, it could be toys, it could be playing games, it be, can be training. But uh, enrichment for one dog might be way different for another dog. Like I have one dog that likes car rides and therefore it's, um, it's enhancing her quality of life because she gets to go out and do something she likes. Where another dog I have hates car rides, it is the most stressful thing in her life is car rides. So I wouldn't necessarily say that's really enhancing her quality of life, improving her quality of life because it stresses her out. So for every animal uh, what improves their quality of life is going to be different. Uh, certain things that used to be enriching might no longer be enriching. So if your dog got this new toy and it's played with it every day for the last two weeks and one day it might decide that, you know what, I'm kind of bored of this toy, I'm not, I'm not going to really touch it and then that corner will sit in the toy bin for the rest of its life. <laughs> you know, that happens. So things can change over time or maybe a dog was out, took your dog out swimming and used to love swimming but something scary happened while I was out swimming and it might be get afraid of water and that going out swimming no longer is something that's enjoyable for the this animal. Uh, so let's go ahead and picture your life without enrichment. What would a human life be with lack of enrichment? Let's really put this into perspective. Alright, so let's think of about most animals inside your home. Most of the time you as a person go out to work and they're left home all day to entertain themselves. So now let's swap positions. Let's say you were stuck home and you know that sounds great at first, right? You know, living the life, don't have to go to work. Sounds great. Okay, now you're stuck home every day, day after day after day after day after day. You can't drive, you can't go outside. Hey, but but get this, you have a TV with a movie and you have a book. All right, that's cool at first. All right, you get to you get to do this book, you get to read through this book, you watch this movie, and maybe you even have a puzzle. You completed this puzzle. That's pretty cool stuff, right? But now go ahead and do three months down the road. If you're stuck home every day, you have that same book, that same movie, and that same puzzle. You would be miserable after a while. Like, okay, maybe occasionally you get to go out of the house and you go for a walk around the block or whatever. But overall, most of your day was spent inside by yourself with these same things. You would start going crazy. I don't, maybe you wouldn't. I don't know. I know I would start going crazy if I had the same three things to do, the same walls to look at, and I couldn't go out and do anything by myself, you know? And there's minimal socialization. I think it would be, uh, it would be a pretty dull life. And this is what a lot of animals live. Not that owners mean to do this. Uh, it's just, life's busy. I get it. You forget to, like, switch out your dog's toys, take them to the park an extra day, you know? 
switch up the routine, switch out your bird's toys, you know, rearrange your bunny's cage. I get it. If life is busy and you get home and you're tired, and you're like, the last thing you want to do is go ahead and rearrange something for your dog, you know, but it's enrichment that's going to improve their quality of life. You wouldn't want to be stuck home with the same thing day after day after day after week after month after year. You would start losing your mind. This is this is what happens. And what happens after this? Eventually, you know, they find something to do and this leads to unwanted behaviors in animals. You start seeing animals that get anxiety. Uh, just think of what you, you know, if you're locked up, you would start getting, I know I would start getting anxious. Uh, depression would be up. Well, this all happens to animals in a little bit different sense. So with dogs, like I said, every individual is a little bit different. Same with species. But dogs, they can start, like, destroying things that they would have never destroyed before. Such as ripping up the carpet or chewing furniture or getting into stuff that they never would have gotten into. I've seen so many uh, destructive dogs. The person's like, you know, well, I'm gone all day, and then I come home and a pillow's destroyed. It's like, well, what else did they have to do, you know? These animals are going to find their own way of enriching their lives. And with uh, birds, this is a big, big one with birds, unfortunately, is lack of enrichment because they do have such high intelligence and require a lot of... Uh, things to uh, stimulate their mental and physical uh, needs. So birds will self-mutilate, uh, which means they'll pluck out their feathers or uh, chew on their feathers and destroy them. And this uh, almost comes see, like uh, almost becomes like a nervous tick, and they sometimes it's irreversible and it's hard to get some birds to stop, or they damage their feathers uh, beyond them ever being able to grow back, which is unfortunate, or uh, they can start picking on their partner that they're in the cage with, and they could over preen them or pluck at them out of frustration. This also leads to screaming. A lot of birds can scream with the lack of proper enrichment out of boredom, or it's just, that's just some of the things that can happen. So uh, horses, also lack of enrichment, stuck in a stall. You'll start seeing horses that crib, that weave, that start chewing on their stall. You know, it's it trickles down into all animals to some extent. Uh, some animals require more uh, mental stimuli than others. Uh, do your research onto each individual species. And then it goes back to, well, well, why do they need enrich so much? And why do some species need more enrichment than others? We'll kind of go back to where they're originally bred from. So dogs, if you look at their uh, wolves, wolves are, you know, packs. They move all day. They're in packs. They're social. They're moving all day. They're hunting. They're scavenging. They're tracking for stuff. You know, that's, that's a lot of work. And then if you go to break it down to a closer relative, it's what these dogs were bred for. A lot of these dogs that people have in their homes are working dogs or hunting dogs. You know, you have these terriers that were bred to hunt, or you have herding dogs that were meant to go work out in the fields all day and run around and chase other animals. Uh, you have huskies, which were bred to pull sleds for miles and miles. You know, you have to look into your individual dog as well. And it'll help you understand if you need to, you know, fulfill some of these needs if you're having issues or behavioral issues. And then we go look into birds. What are they doing in the wild? Well, a lot of these parrots that we have, they can still be found in the wild. And you, there are a lot of their behaviors have been studied. So, you know, these birds are flying miles a day looking for food, looking for stuff to forge to build nest. They have, they're in these big flocks, or they have a, a partner that they're paired with, and it's a lot of social interaction. It's a lot of scavenging for things and foraging. So what does all of this have in common? A lot of these tasks involve finding food. So horses, another one. Out in the wild, they're traveling for miles a day, looking for food, adequate forage, and, you know, water. 
So all of these have, they spend their whole day looking for food. And what is one thing that we do as pet owners is we give their food in a bowl in front of them. We just took their whole days of work away. What else are they going to do now? Their instinct has been to find food, find food, find food. And we're like, hey, don't worry about that. We got some nice high quality food and the silver little bowl that I'm going to set right in front of you. We took their whole day away. That was like their whole job for the day. We, we just put it on a silver platter right in front of them. <laughs> so now we have to start thinking, all right, let's start hopping back to some of these primal instincts to avoid some of these unwanted behaviors we're getting with pets. So that's when he comes into enriching. Sure, putting a food bowl in front of them is enrichment. They're enjoying that. But you're also not, you're not fulfilling a lot of needs that these animals naturally have. So with birds, birds are, um, can be a, a tough one to enrich because not all birds are, not all birds know how to play with toys or interact. It's something they would learn by watching in the wild. They would watch their parents do it. Their parents would teach them or other flock members would teach them how to forage properly and what to be afraid of and what not to be afraid of. You know, we, uh, a lot of people get birds or birds are raised up uh, in a way that they're not really taught how to play with toys. So I myself have two birds. They play, they hardly ever touch their toys. I've been working on it. Um, and what problems do I have? They scream. They're big screamers. I walk into the room and they scream for me because I'm their entertainment. They don't know how to occupy their own time outside of me. So this is a problem with a lot of birds they don't know how to be independent and they don't know how to play with toys you know you're like well, what do you mean a bird doesn't know how to play with toys you just go over and you know play with it some birds don't know how to they did they weren't really taught so that's when you can go in the process of step-by-step -step baby steps of teaching these animals how to play and it's not just birds there's some dogs as well so one thing you can add to add enrichment to their lives, a good place to start, probably one of the easier places to start is with food. So I'm going to go ahead and put an example in with a bird and then a dog. So for a bird, what I do to start is I have that bowl that they're used to eating out of and I sprinkle some shredded paper on top. So now they have to pick the paper off if they want to get to the food. And then you start adding different objects of different textures, sizes, and they have to move that stuff around or take it out of the bowl in order to get their food. And from there you can start getting a lot more elaborate. You can put their food now maybe in a paper ball and they have to rip open the paper ball to get the food. It's just building step by step of teaching your animal how to problem solve. So now they're problem solving, okay, I have this food, how do I get to it? I have to go through a couple more steps. It's not, it's sitting in this bowl, but I have to go through a couple more steps to get it. And then you remove the bowl and you could put it in cardboard or um, like a cardboard box is always a good one. And you do toilet paper rolls and start off with the ends open and then fold one end and then fold both ends. That's a great one I use for my rabbits. And they have to problem solve. So they start using these skills that they naturally have and that they it's just it's really great for their brain so their brain starts you know they have to think and they develop skills of problem solving and now they're enriching themselves now that you don't have to be involved they're fulfilling natural instincts they get to shred things apart and Cool things and scavenge and it really helps with a lot of these unwanted behaviors so with my dogs I um I started school so I am in school full-time it is basically like a full-time job I am there f at the school for six hours plus the drive time Monday through Friday and my dogs this is the most they've ever been alone uh, 
I normally, before I had a job where I could take my dogs with me, I did dog walking and pet sitting. And they could go along with me on some of the walks. They could go with me on car rides. So now that they're home, I, I have a camera set up to keep an eye on them. And I, less with my older dog. She sleeps most of the time at this point. <laughs> um, but it was mostly, I noticed with my younger dog, my Aussie, my Australian Shepherd, she was bored. She was, she, it, up until most of the day she sleeps, and then about midway through the day, she was like, all right, what's there to do? And she's just kind of like pacing around, she's looking around, and then they start barking. And they start getting barky because they're bored. And they're like, well, we can go ahead and bark at this since there's nothing else to do. And then they chewed up a piece of my carpet and my older dog ate it. She has never eaten carpet in her life. And I put the blame on me. I'm not able to get them out as much. I'm not home as much. And so I was like, I need to change this. How, how can I improve their quality of life? Because I'm not happy with their quality of life right now. How can I make this better during a, kind of a, a crappy situation in my life that I'm gone full time? Uh, how, how can I make this better? So what I did was I got like Kong balls. Uh, they're rubber balls. with They're hollowed out in the center. So I'm able to fill that with food. I made my own mix. You can find it on my Facebook page at the Pet Room Gen. I made my own mix. I froze it, and in the morning before I go, I give them both one of those, and they work on that for a couple hours. And now they are physically more tired because they are pushing this ball around. They're licking at it. They're clawing it. They're holding it down, and they're mentally more tired because they had to figure out this thing that's rolling around, moving all around, tastes really good, but it's frozen. How are we going to get everything out of it? You know, and that's something that's really so simple that just improves their quality of life. It can be that easy. It doesn't have to be complicated. It doesn't have to be expensive. Uh, next week, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and put some loose dog food in a cardboard box. And I'm going to go ahead and maybe put string or something around that box or tape it up. I'm not sure yet. And then I'm going to give it to them before I go. And they're going to have to shred open that box to get that food. And this is great. So now they're shredding things that I give them. It's my idea, but hey, I know you're bored and obviously you want to shred things because look at the poor carpet. So I'm going to go ahead and give you this box. So now they're able to shred this box open and it's a natural fulfillment for them. They're no longer going to go over and shred that carpet anymore. They're like, I have this box. There's food in this box. Heck yeah, I'm going to shred this instead. These are simple ways to improve your animal's quality of life. So this isn't just for dogs. This is for rabbits. I believe rabbits are incredibly under-enriched animals. They are very smart animals. <laughs> believe it or not, really smart animals. Uh, like I said, my favorite thing with my rabbits is putting a couple of their, you know, maybe their pellets for the day put them up in some cardboard uh, toilet paper or paper towel rolls, fold over the ends. They'll sit there, they'll toss it around, they'll scratch at it, they'll open it up. And, you know, this helps from them chewing unwanted things, maybe baseboards or wires. They won't go over and chew your baseboards and wires if they have a little piece of cardboard filled with their favorite treats in it. It's just really, it's really that, it's so simple. <laughs> But it doesn't seem like it because you say this animal needs enrichment and you're thinking like oh my god like what do I even need to do it's it can be really easy just to know your animal know what your animal likes so if I went ahead and I put maybe in a cardboard tube for my rabbit if I went ahead and put carrots in one and pellets in the other the carrot one's gonna be slightly less rewarding for my one rabbit, she just prefers the pellets over carrots. So I would start off with a higher reward if you know if there's something that they're going to like. And then maybe work to other things that they, they're like, mm, this is alright I guess. But definitely start when you're teaching them to first figure it out. Start off easy. Because you don't want these animals to be discouraged. You don't want to start off with this impossible puzzle when they don't even know how to, you like, they don't know where to start. Think of it as like math. You have to know the basics before you can go anywhere. 
you know you need to know how to add and subtract before you can multiply and divide and you need to know add subtract and multiply and divide before you can even think about going into algebra you know you need to learn the basics first these animals need to learn the basics first as well it is meant it's mental work for them <laughs> it's like learning to them it is it is learning to them so start off easy so they feel accomplished if you give something that's too hard they're just going to feel discouraged and they're not going to want to continue doing it anymore they're like why would I go back to that I spent 15 minutes trying to get a piece of pellet out and I, I couldn't I couldn't do it why would I go back and try again so start off easy and if you're finding it's too hard for your animal start go back a step or if you're finding that your animal got all of that food in three seconds maybe maybe step it up you'll be surprised how quickly how quickly they uh they figure things out and they're just gonna they're just gonna keep doing it you know it's it's really um it's really a good thing for animals it provides mental and physical stimulation that they just they require or else a lot of times you're gonna get unwanted behaviors but more importantly, these animals really need it. Just like you need enrichment in your life, you know, you want to watch more than one movie, read more than one book. These animals want the same thing. They're, they don't want to they don't want to get bored. They don't want to have to sit there and pluck their feathers out because they're stressed or they're bored. And they don't want to sit there and eat your carpet, really. They, they'd rather rip open a cardboard box with food in it. <laughs> so this is on enrichment. If you have any questions, feel free. Let me know. Find me on Facebook, YouTube, uh, what else am I on? TikTok, anything. Thanks so much for uh, listening to me. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, you can find me at www.thepetroomgen.com as well. I uh, hope to see you next time. Bye.